Hi, I'm Nelson Day. I am a AMGA certified rock guide and also a single pitch instructor program provider in Joshua Tree National Park. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to place cams. And camming devices, this is a cam, are designed to create anchoring places or places you can create secure security for yourself in rock. For reference, this crack right here, I can place my cam in this crack and it will become, become an anchoring spot for me. Generally, I'm going to be placing my rope through this carabiner attached to the cam. After the cam is placed in the rock, and I can use that to protect myself as I'm climbing up a rock on lead. Or if I am building an anchor for myself out of three cams for playing around on top rope. But cams have different parts uh, anatomically. This would be what we refer to as the cam lobes on the very top of the cam. There's one, two, three, four cam lobes. This would be the trigger going across the cam and this where my thumb is a thumb loop and what cams do is they are spring loaded these lobes are spring loaded here and the way I can engage these lobes is I pull down the trigger and the cam lobes compress and if I let go of the trigger the cam lobes expand because of that spring loaded uh, aspect of this device so what, I'm, what these devices are designed to do is I can pull this trigger compress the lobes place the cam in a crack and then the spring loaded cam lobes will open into the crack and that will keep the cam in place right where I want the cam to stay as I'm climbing above it. The main feature or main principle these cams operate on is friction. So if I place this cam in the rock, make a crack kind of like this, then what I'm hanging on is going to be the interface between the cam lobes and the rock. And the interface is just creating friction for me. So really friction is the, is the main idea behind how these cams are holding in the rock itself. Friction requires two things. It requires surface area and it requires uh, force in order for friction to happen. The surface area in question on this cam is going to be the cam lobe itself. So I'm looking to get maximum surface area on this cam lobe, each four of these four cam lobes engaged with the rock. That surface area being maximized is going to provide the maximum friction for me. The next thing I need to worry about is force and the the only really, really thing I have to worry about with this force component of my cam is that my stem, which is the cam stem, is pointed in the direction of pull. That's going to create, keep the forces in the, in the proper orientation. I prefer to keep my cams um, compressed most of the way closed when I place them. This cam, it says on the tag, 10 kilonewtons. And I'm never really worried about 10 kilonewtons as a strength component for my equipment. Um, a kilonewton is about 230 pounds. So this cam can hold about 2,000 pounds. I'm never expecting to put 2,000 pounds of force on this cam, but what I am more worried about is that my cam doesn't just pop out of the rock or somehow fail from a security standpoint. So in order for me to get maximum security out of this cam, I like to keep my cam closed most of the way closed. So optimally, I think my cam lobe tips being lined up all the way across to about 90 degrees between the cam lobe angle. That's about as high, as about far open as I want this cam to be before I'm looking for the next bigger size up. And when I get done placing my cam, the ability for my cam to expand, you can see the lobes expanding, is really what's going to be providing me security. So the more closed my cam lobes are, the more secure my place is going to become. So I place this cam, I'm looking also for engagement with the rock somewhere below this axle line. So I call this this horizontal bar here the cam axle. And I, this axle line, anywhere below the cam axle line, engaging on the lobes of the rock is going to be pretty optimal for my placement to engage, my cam placement to engage with the rock. Um, so these, these are the main principles behind my cam. I'm looking for, again, full contact across the cam lobe face, engagement with the rock below the cam axle line, and also the cam being most of the way closed to give me optimal security in my placement. And then lastly, the stem being pointed in the direction of anticipated pool. And now I'm going to place this cam so you can see what it would look like. A nice placement in high quality rock right behind me. Sometimes it's helpful when I'm placing a cam to not necessarily utilize this thumb hole with my thumb loop so much. Sometimes I like to grab the thumb loop with my palm, especially when I'm placing a cam kind of into a corner, such as we see here. Just because it's a little awkward to get my, when my, hand, my thumb is in the thumb loop, now my hand is bigger, a bigger profile than if I can put this loop in my hand. Now my hand is a lower profile. So I'm going to use my hand around this thumb loop when I'm compressing this cam for this placement. I'm going to squeeze my cam trigger. I'm going to place this cam into the rock. 
And when I'm done placing the cam, I'm just going to inspect and make sure that all four lobes are getting full surface contact engagement all the way across the cam lobes on all four of these lobes. There's one, two on the top and two lobes on the bottom. I can see that all four lobes are getting 100% contact with the rock. This cam lobe, these cam lobes are squeezed most of the way closed and my whole head of my cam is inside this crack. I would prefer to keep my cams pretty deep, deeply placed because in the event that this cam does start to slip out, my cam is, has to go through more rock before the, the placement completely fails. So if you can get a deeper placement, sometimes you can just shove your cam in a little bit deeper and now you have even more security. I do want to keep these, this trigger right here on the cam outside of the crack so that when I go to try to take my cam out, I can still reach that trigger. It's very important for me to remove the cam. But other than that, I'm very excited about my security in this particular placement. This cam is oriented so that the stem is going to be pulled directly outwards. If my force was expected to be pulling downwards, I'd want to orient my stem so that the stem is pointed in the direction of anticipated pull, being downwards. So that is the last part of what we're looking for is correct orientation of our cam stem.